order. It is to that point that the veterans group Vote Vets has just released a powerful new ad that features 11 sitting members of Congress, all of whom are veterans, um, all trying to pressure President Biden, basically, into, into keeping America's promise to protect the Afghan interpreters who assisted the U.S. military. Watch. As the sun rises on America's Independence Day. The sun sets on America's longest war. Our troops are coming home on orders of our commander in chief. Promise made, promise kept. But our troops aren't the only ones who serve the cause of freedom. There are thousands of Afghan interpreters who served at our side, as loyal as any one of us. My interpreter is an American hero, too. We promised to have their backs. They put their lives on the line for us, and they'll be in danger once our troops are gone. The president did the honorable thing when he promised to get those who helped us out of harm's way. Now we need to get it done. We're down to days and weeks to save thousands who serve beside us. Whatever it takes, we in Congress are ready to help. Because we leave no one behind. We need to take them, too. We need to take them, too. We need to take them, too, and give them the freedom they earned. We need to take them, too. Joining us now is Congressman Jake Auchincloss. He's a Democrat from Massachusetts. He's a retired Marine who served in Afghanistan. He's one of those 11 members of Congress who appeared in that new ad uh, urging the protection of Afghan interpreters and their families. Congressman Auchincloss, it's a real pleasure to have you here. Thanks for taking the time tonight. Thanks for having me on, Rachel. It does feel like um, this is a very short order demand and a very short order task. Uh, the reference there in the ad is to days and weeks. What do you think the time frame is here, and do you think this is doable? Yes, it's doable. The war on terror has been with me my whole life. I reported on the 9-11 attacks as the editor of my middle school newspaper. I joined the Marine Corps as a platoon commander after college. Just a few weeks ago, as a member of Congress, I voted to repeal the AUMF. And I know that that's a story shared by many of the veterans who joined me in that video with Vote Vets. And we're coming together to make sure that America keeps its promise. When I was a platoon commander in Afghanistan, I worked with several interpreters who were with me when we hit IEDs, who were with me as we talked to village elders in Taliban-controlled villages. I made promises personally to them, and I want to keep them. In terms of the U.S. government's capability in this regard, there's been some interesting discussion about what it would take to get this done at speed, moving um, Afghan interpreters and their families to a third country where they can have their visas processed and be vetted before they'd be cleared to come to the United States, potentially moving them to Guam, U.S. territory, uh, for that purpose. Obviously, the huge months-long, back in some cases, years-long backlog that has become the normal in terms of processing these kinds of visas won't work here. How do you see this logistically coming together? What do you think should be done? President Biden said that he would get 100 million shots in arms in his first 100 days. He more than doubled that. He said he'd deliver a big, bold infrastructure bill. He's delivering that as we speak. He said we are going to withdraw fully by September 11th and secure the futures of the 18,000 interpreters who aided American troops. I have full confidence he'll deliver that. And we in Congress are going to keep the pressure up and keep the oversight up to ensure that it happens. Yes, in Congress, we can pass uh, procedures to streamline and expedite the, the SIV program, and that's necessary. But we know that that's still a years-long timeline. There needs to be immediate action to relocate these interpreters from Afghanistan to third countries so that they can have a safe place to apply for the uh, SIV program. As you say, though, President Biden has said this can happen, right? President Biden has pledged that we will not leave them behind. You and your fellow veterans in Congress making a very articulate, very persuasive case that this needs to be done. Everybody seems to be arguing on the same side of it, but yet it doesn't appear to be operationally happening. Sometimes it's harder to push on an open door than a closed one. Do you know uh, either who needs to be persuaded or what fires need to be lit under what parts of the government in order to make it start happening more quickly. Unlike President Trump, who turned his back on the Kurds and allowed them to be massacred, this president's going to keep his promises. He's been clear about that. Uh, they are moving expeditiously. We have uh, negotiations ongoing with 
uh, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan about relocating up to 9,000 of the Afghan interpreters. The other half, uh, we are still in negotiations with other countries about that. I have confidence that this administration can execute and that we will see them safely relocated before September 11th. Congressman Jake Auchincloss, Democrat from Massachusetts. Thank you for, for being here and helping us understand. I know this is, as I said, a, a short order problem that needs a big response in very short term. Uh, we'd love to have you keep us surprised uh, as this develops. Absolutely. All right. Much more to come here tonight. Stay with us.